Okay, welcome back, everyone. Um, we'll get back into our subject. And I know we have a lot of questions about what we've been saying, that God has given us complete authority here on earth. And we as believers now have it through Jesus Christ, and we must exercise it. Now, uh, when we look at scripture also, we find that there were men and women who understood this. Even before the Lord Jesus paid the price for our sins and redeemed us, um, the understanding about prayer was there among a lot of uh, people. So one good example is Elijah. Okay, Elijah. And um, how did Elijah uh, commune with God? So in 1 Kings chapter 17, we see that God gives Elijah a word. So God speaks to him, like how uh, you know Prem was saying that uh, God's purposes, he already reveals he has plans for us. So God gave him a word and said, uh, it's going to rain. So they were going through a time of uh, a drought and they were waiting for rain. So here comes the promise of God through prophet Elijah. So we know Elijah was clear and sure that it is going to rain. He goes and he tells uh, King Ahab, it's going to rain, prepare for rain. Okay, now think about this. God has already spoken. God has already revealed his purpose. God has already put a word in Elijah's heart. He got an image, he got a picture, he understood this is what God wants to do in the land. And he is informed also. But there is no rain. He is informed. But where is the rain? It didn't start raining. So what do we see Elijah do? Elijah goes. He puts his head between his knees. First Kings chapter 18. He starts to pray. Okay. Now we can ask Elijah the question. Prophet Elijah. Why? Why are you praying? God already said no. It's going to rain. There is no need for you to pray. But Elijah had revelation. This is how God works. There's something about prayer, something about the design of prayer, something about engaging with God even after God has revealed his purpose. Plan, God's plan clear. We know what God wants. God wants rain. What is Elijah doing? Praying. How much is he praying? Prays once, tells his servant, go, see, anything, any results? Servant comes back, no sir, nothing, we can't see anything right now. He says, okay, no problem. I'll pray some more. Pray some more. Right? Sends his servant. Go. See. Any results? Comes back. He says, no, sir. Nothing. But look at this. Not only did he have a revelation of prayer, but he had a revelation of persistent prayer. He doesn't give up. God said it. It's not happening. God wants me to pray. I won't stop praying. Till I see what God promised. How is that? Amazing, isn't it? So Elijah is exercising his God-given authority. What we are talking about. He knew God wants me to do something to fulfill his purpose. What is that? Prayer. So he's praying. He prays seven times. Okay? Seven times. And finally, there's a small manifestation of the promise of God. He sees a small cloud and now he's convinced it's happening now. The manifestation is happening now. But what is there between God revealing his purpose and the manifestation? The prayer of Elijah. Okay? So God wants us to pray. And that's something we have to understand. Yes? We know God's plans, God's desires. Okay? Amazing things God wants to do in our lives. But... We have to pray. Okay? Think about um, Daniel, a man of prayer in the Bible. We will keep talking more and more about him uh, as we go further. But Daniel also had a revelation about prayer. And he spent a lot of time in prayer. He committed his life to praying. And we notice that he uh, knew about the captives who were held up in Babylon. So we know God's people were captives in Babylon uh, and there was a prophecy about their release. Okay, So when Daniel was there, he is one of those captives in Babylon. He knows what God wants to do. He knew 
के एट द एंड ऑफ सेवेंटी इयर्स दस गॉट टू बी अ रिलीज गोइंग बैक फ्रॉम बैबलॉन एंड इवन दो ही नोस द पर्पज ऑफ गॉड यू नो वॉट डैनियल डिड ही स्टार्टेड प्रेम he started praying and he started telling god god you spoke through the prophet the prophet jeremiah that after 70 years we are going to leave this place it's almost time now and i'm praying it has to happen so even daniel prayed to see the fulfillment of god not just in his personal life but in his nation in his nation he held on to the words of god and prayed it through for the word to manifest in the nation so what does all this tell us about god and prayer prayer is essential essential for us to see the purposes of god manifest this is how god works okay yes god is all powerful as we've been saying we use the word sovereign sovereign and yet he chooses to work through us now one very important thing for us as believers to remember is that uh we have the power of god working in us and we've been given the authority of christ the way we see elijah praying and seeing full uh, the purpose fulfilled daniel praying purpose fulfilled the church is supposed to pray to see god's purposes fulfilled in our time and in our age uh, there are many scriptures you know scriptures uh, like romans chapter 8 verses 16 and 17 that tell us that we are now god's family you and i we are sons and daughters of god and we are also scriptures say that we are joint heirs heirs with christ who are heirs you know heirs are people who uh, who carry a blessing that's been passed on by uh, the the parents right so they have inherited blessings and so we are those heirs of god and that's a big thing that now we can carry that authority and those blessings uh, okay so when we look at ourselves let let's not look at ourselves as being very weak oh if i pray why will god even listen no he has given us the authority not just as uh, people who are created in his image yes adam and eve got uh, the authority from christ uh, from god when they were created but we now who are in christ jesus we are sons we are daughters we are joint heirs so when we go before the father and we say father you have promised in your word these are the blessings we are claiming our blessings we are taking our blessings in the name of jesus the father will say yes take it it's done okay it's done for you it's yours you can take it so that's the kind of um, you know that that's the kind of mindset that we must have when we go in prayer this word when we understand that god has already promised i am a joint dad i am going to the father i am going to ask the father and god father will grant it to me our prayers will be prayers that are bold that are confident right because we know who god is and we know who we are so that's who we are in christ and that's who we are when we go in prayer we've been given uh you know those blessings and we've been given that position and even there are other scriptures in matthew 16 uh jesus said i give you the keys of the kingdom i give you the keys of the kingdom anyone carrying any keys today if you are don't lose it okay so uh keys are so important keys are so important you lose one key you lose access to an entire you know home or a building or something keys are so important so what does a key uh symbolize key symbolizes authority if you have keys to your house you have authority to that house you won't give that key would you give it to any random person say okay take the keys 
Nobody will do that because you're giving away authority to your home. So key is authority. And you know what Jesus said? Take the keys of the kingdom. How do you like it? How does that make you feel? Imagine Jesus is giving you the keys in your hands. Okay. Everyone, can you open your hand? Look at your hand and... Key refers to authority. It refers to authority. Okay. So if you can open your hand just now. And uh, I know you don't have like a physical key. But can you imagine Jesus is giving you the keys. You've got keys in your hands. I give you the keys of the kingdom. Okay. How many here? You have the keys of the kingdom. Okay. Good. Good job. <laughs> Everyone's, you know, got that point. I'm carrying the keys of the kingdom. What does it symbolize? Authority. Authority. We are carrying authority of the kingdom. And what did Jesus say? Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So binding and losing is something we can do to release our authority. And we will come to it later on. So you and I have that capacity. We can bind and lose, meaning we can allow, we can disallow and ensure that God's kingdom is ruling and reigning on the face of the earth. So that's the kind of authority you and I carry, sons, daughters, joint heirs. We have the keys of the kingdom. And, um, you know, Jesus also said, in my name, Mark chapter 16, he said, in my name, you will cast out demons. You know, you, you will, uh, those who believe, they will pray in other tongues. They, even if they drink something that is poisonous, you know, that will not affect them. So there are many things that we will do in the name of Jesus. Now, the name of Jesus is also bearing authority. Just the way he gave the keys, he says, okay, take. I'm giving you the name of Jesus. So what do you have? You have the keys. You have the name of Jesus. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. Today, you and I, we have the keys and we also carry the name of Jesus. That means authority has been given. The church is spiritually strong. Jesus did not make the church spiritually weak and say, okay, you go into the world every day, you fight a battle, get beaten up, and I feel sorry for you. No, the church is powerful. The church is spiritually strong. Every son of God, every daughter of God, every child of God, each one of you sitting here, sitting with authority, sitting with the keys, sitting with uh, the name of Jesus that has been given to each of us. Now, having authority is one thing. We have to learn how to use the authority. Use the authority. And we've been saying that, you know, when, when the church begins to engage with the understanding of what we right now carry, we will see powerful things taking place. Right? So the purposes of God, what did we say? God put us in charge. So if something is not working, who's God counting on? You and me. He says, okay, somebody's sick, you pray. Something is going wrong, you look at the word and you find out what should be the solution to that problem. Okay, there are natural calamities, disasters. What can we do? What, how can we be creative? How can we come up with a solution? We can't blame God for everything and say, God, why? Why, why is this happening? So many of us do that. God, why are you doing this? God is not doing it. You know, uh, he's not putting us in a place where uh, he's sure that we are going to fail. No. Think about this. He created us. Originally, he gave us authority. Satan got that authority because man sinned. Jesus sacrificed himself to give us back the authority. And today we are sitting here as children of God with the keys, right? And the name of Jesus. How much more do you want God to do? And why, why are we blaming God for everything? We are carrying authority. So we have to see, okay, what should I do now to release that authority? The church is spiritually powerful. You and I are spiritually 
empowered by God. Okay, and so we must rise up. Now we may ask the question again. You know, God, God who is so great and mighty, um, why is He allowing us to take charge? What if we make a mistake? You see, the way God works, right? His deputization is complete. Meaning, once He puts someone in charge, He's going to trust that person through and through. That okay, I put you in charge. You have to do what is required to do. God will not keep interfering every now and then, right? So that's how God works. Um, and you know, there are there are certain uh, purposes of God uh, that you know those will anyway be fulfilled. Like if you take, for example, um, uh, Jesus coming to the world. And becoming our redemption price, or uh, now we know that the the whole world is moving towards the end of times. There are many things that are happening around the world, right? So all these things will anyway unfold. These are all part of the purposes of God. And then there are many other things that have been revealed in Scripture for us. Now the church has to rise up. Who's the church? One building. Who's the church? I am the church. Can we say that? I am the church. Okay, you and I, we are the church. I am the church. We have to rise up, understand what is it that God has spoken in His Word. That's why we are here to understand it, and then we pray that through. Then we, um, you know, work with it, and we make sure that God's kingdom comes. Okay, so that is the responsibility that you and I carry, and so God is going to, uh, in a way, you know, it, it sounds funny, but depend on us. It sounds funny because He does not have to depend on anybody, but God has chosen to depend on you and me, and He has put us in different positions and said, "You do what I'm calling you to do." That's how this whole thing is going to work out. This is how. My purposes will work out in the kingdom of God. So all of us are here, co-working with God to unfold the purposes of God, and we will see how prayer plays a role in it. You know, a good question which uh, uh, Prem asked us. You know, why should we pray when God already knows uh, what is going to take place? The invitation is from God. God is the one who said, "You come to me, you speak to me, you talk to me, you ask me." Right? So when He is inviting, we are supposed to respond. Here we have a scripture from Jeremiah twenty-nine and verse twelve. I'm on page eight in our notes, and it says, "Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you." So. God is saying, "Come, pray. I listen to you. I listen to you." Another verse there, Jeremiah thirty-three, verse three: "Call to me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you do not know." Call to me. Okay, how many of you are calling God? You're, is he getting your calls? I hope so. Right. So make sure you're calling. We've got to be. Calling God uh, because He He's promising. I'll pick your call. Okay, I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things. So these are Old Testament scriptures. How about the New Testament? You know, even in the New Testament, um, we observe that Jesus taught about praying. Okay, we'll come to that uh, later on. But think about this: the disciples they went and asked Jesus. Teach us how to pray. Okay, why did they ask him to teach them how to pray? Now, if we have someone in our lives, uh, we observe them; they're good at something. Maybe they're good at cooking, or maybe they're good at uh, sports or some sort. What will we do? Whatever they are good at, we'll go and ask them. We'll say, "Hey, teach me to cook, or teach me to play this game," because they are so good at it. Just think, disciples are with Jesus, right? 
day in and day out they are observing him all the time they are observing him they could have asked him jesus teach us to preach jesus teach us uh, to heal the sick he did all of that he did a lot of that we know why are they asking jesus teach us how to pray why hmm because ha huh, okay it contains authority and power okay correct anything else any other reason why they asked only this and not anything else okay sure sure yes yes so um yeah so that's a good answer also where uh, maybe they saw jesus praying all the time so jesus being the son of god is investing a lot of time in prayer there's something about prayer no that if jesus is praying then we too need to pray and so they go and ask jesus teach us how to pray and then of course the lord's prayer he goes ahead and he uh, talks about it yes daniel you have a question okay good good yeah that's another answer maybe they were not doing it right because they saw the pharisees praying and probably they prayed like that and jesus prayed differently so they were asking him uh, it could also be that they saw results every time jesus prayed there was an answer so they felt we should learn how to pray correctly from jesus for all these reasons they asked him and he taught them how to pray so even in the new testament uh god is teaching us how to pray that means we must pray okay uh in luke 18 verse 1 jesus said this men uh should always pray and not lose heart that means we must pray and not give up we must pray and not get discouraged is it possible to keep praying and then you know become discouraged sometimes yeah yeah correct so yeah sometimes we may get discouraged when we are praying what could be the reasons uh maybe there's a delay of some sort or we are disappointed you know something else happened or something like that and uh, we may feel discouraged but we are told that we must not give up we should always pray never get discouraged always pray and that's what god is looking for and you know when it comes to um i use the word co working with god co laboring with god you know god is almighty but he's calling us to join his team he says okay come you be my partner we'll work together right we are co laboring with god so god invites us to pray to seek him but he also invites us to co labor with him in his purposes okay so there is one particular scripture in ezekiel chapter 22 uh, in fact the whole passage there from verse 29 to 31 where god decided to judge the people and he is asking there in verse 30 so i sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that i should not destroy it but i found no one so god is looking for how many people to pray 50 people are you all concentrating or yeah what does it say verse 30 ezekiel 22 verse 30 how many people is he looking for are you sure only one half of the land okay anyway my question is how many people does god want to pray so that he will not judge the land answer is one one person even if there is one person and god is looking for only one person and so sad no he did not find anyone i can't imagine not even one person woke up and prayed and god is saying 
I have to judge the land because not even one person prayed. So there are times when we are co-laboring with God that even if we are only one person doing the praying, God can accomplish his powerful purposes through us. And we must never feel that I'm only one person praying. What is the point? What can God do through that? It's okay. There are times when God worked through one person to re release his purposes over a land. Okay, Even one intercessor makes a huge difference. That's how God works. That's how his authority works. God is sovereign, but he wants us to pray. He says, come, ask me. I'll answer you. And, uh, you know, Jesus prayed a lot. So we know that Jesus also gave that pattern through his life. And we know that when we co-labor with God like this, even one person interceding, it makes a huge difference. So these are all the reasons why we must pray. I've been saying it time and again. It's God's design. And God's design will never fail. If we are failing, there can be many other reasons why we are failing. But prayer is God's design and God is the one who invites us to pray. Uh, we can fulfill our authority through prayer. So when we pray, everything that we said, the, the church is so powerful, you and I are carrying the keys, how to release that authority? There's got to be a way of releasing that authority. Prayer is the way of releasing that authority. Now, there are many other reasons why we must pray also. One reason is that um, there is a need for intercessors. Okay, uh, There are people who go through all kinds of difficulty and challenges and God calls us to stand in the gap and pray for them. You know, they can be people in our own circles. We, whenever we go to church, it happens, right? Like suddenly somebody comes to you and they say, oh, brother, you know, I'm not getting a job. Pray for me. Or someone else comes and says, uh, my mother is uh, sick. Pray for her. Many needs that rise up among people. Or we observe, um, how many of us watch the news? Okay, we watch the news, right? And uh, when we see something happening, something terrible happening, uh, what is our natural response? We just see it and then we're like, okay, fine. So what? It's happening all over the world. And we stop with that. But how about we pray? We can have a heart of prayer. We say, oh God, terrible things are happening. You know, we just pray for uh, those people. We pray for those communities. Praying for others, praying for others, whether they are individuals or communities, that's something that God wants us to do. Uh, and there is a need for that. There is a need for that. You know, in the Bible, uh, somebody who went through a lot of problems uh, is Job. Job went through many difficulties. And we see his remark uh, in, in um, the book of Job, where he is almost crying out. Job 16 and verse 21, he says um, that one might plead for a man with God as a man pleads for his neighbor. So he's literally crying out and saying, I wish somebody was praying for me. There are people in need all around us. And one of the ways in which we can bless them is by praying for them, praying for them, right? One of the first and best things that we can do for others is to pray for them. And that's why prayer is important. And another reason why you and I must pray is, excuse me, to experience God's rewards in our lives. God's rewards in our lives. So how are we going to get rewards through prayer? This is how Jesus taught us prayer. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 and 6, where he says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you... When you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. 
So Jesus is teaching us how to pray. How to pray? Don't pray to promote yourself. Don't pray to become popular. That's the first part. Like you stand in the streets and you're praying loudly. What is the intention behind that? For people to hear. But who are we praying to? Our prayer is to God, isn't it? So who's the audience for prayer? God is the audience. We are praying to God. God is the one who is listening to our prayers. So what did Jesus say? You go into your room, shut your door, pray. Your father who sees you in secret. Your father who sees you in secret will reward you openly. That's what God is calling us to. Rewards? Do we want rewards? Do we want blessings? Do we want outcomes, results in our lives? They'll come. But when? When I have spent time praying to the Father in secret. Okay? In secret. People can see the rewards in the open and they say, Wow, how come God is doing all these things through your life? But there's something that is happening in the secret which they may never know. But this is what we want to invite all of us to. To build a strong prayer life with the Father. Pray to the Father in secret. Your Father who sees you in secret. You know, sometimes when we pray, we've been saying, you know, we carry that mindset where we say, God is not listening. God is not interested. But what did Jesus say? Your father who sees you in secret. So I'm going into the secret place, spending time with the Lord in prayer. My father is seeing me. My father is hearing me. My father understands me, my needs. Okay? It's so encouraging. Jesus said that. Your father, he will see you in secret. You will not be lost. Your prayers will not be lost. Go, spend time in prayer. The father who sees you in secret, what will he do? He will answer. He will reward you openly. So this is what all of us as believers need to develop in our own lives. A prayer life. Okay, a prayer life. Now this prayer life, yeah, it's kind of secret because nobody may know about it. Right? We are generally the kind that want to be known. Today's generation, uh, yeah, want to be known instantly. That's why you have Instagram, right? Like, put it up. Anything that you're doing right now, the whole world has to know. I did this. I went here. These are my friends. This is my life. Okay? But what is Jesus calling us to? Come away. Come to the secret place. Is it easy? It's not easy. For our generation, it's not easy at all. <laughs> we want to be popular. We want to be famous. It's Hiring, it's difficult, it's frustrating to be in the secret place. Lord, nobody knows. Nobody knows what I'm doing. God says, don't worry, I know. Okay? I am watching you. Your father who sees you in secret. God is watching. Because our prayer is to God. That's God's Instagram maybe, right? So he's getting updates. And that's what we must be concerned about. Are we, is God getting my updates? And it's going to take a little bit of training. It's not easy. Our flesh will say, no, I can't take it. You know, it's very difficult. Don't do this to me. But we say, flesh, you have no rights. Okay, you have no rights. My spirit man is going to rule and reign. So I will take time with my father in secret. And my father who sees me in secret will reward me openly. So build a prayer life. Build, you know, that relationship, deep relationship with God. And yes, there are many things we want, we need. We are seeking for blessings of God. Everything will come. God has good plans for us. Plans to prosper us, not to harm us. Give us a hope and a future. Everything will unfold. Don't worry. But here is what God wants from us. He says, come. Come to the secret place. Jesus taught us this. And so we know God's heart. 
God wants us to pray. He wants us to spend time in prayer, to release our authority, to be a blessing to others, to receive whatever we want in our lives, and of course, to deepen our relationship with God and receive His rewards. Now, what if we don't pray? Okay, this is our uh, next question. We understood about you know authority and why should we pray. What if we don't pray? Okay, as a believer, we decide I'm not going to pray. What will happen? Disconnection. Correct, because prayer is communion. How can I maintain my relationship with God without prayer? You know, we'll become like that hi bye shopkeeper scenario. You just say, Good morning, God. Ah, good morning. That's it. Finished. There's no deep relationship, disconnection. So, for us to build our relationship with God, we have to spend time in prayer. There's no other way, there's no shortcut to this. You know, sometimes people you put up things, right? Like five steps, three steps. No, no easy steps to this. You have to spend time in prayer. There is no other way to deepen and strengthen our relationship with God. And if we don't pray, we will also fail in our responsibility, which God has given us. We said he gave us authority so we can overcome the works of the enemy. Now imagine someone's sick and we don't want to pray about it. We won't be able to fulfill our responsibility, isn't it? To see healing in that situation. Or someone's going through some difficulty and we are not praying about it. We're not giving God an opportunity to work there and bring the victory. right? So we will fail in our responsibility if we do not pray. And so we must pray about all things. Have you all heard that uh, hymn? Uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Okay, so beautiful hymn and uh, nice words there where, where the author, he writes, uh, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Now, when God has given us a beautiful opportunity to pray and we don't pray, it's not God's fault that his purposes are not being accomplished. Okay, so that's a question we have to ask ourselves. Am I really praying? If I'm not praying, then okay, I better start praying because uh, things will happen just because I am missing in action. And you know, I'm not doing what God is calling me to do. So I'm just going to pause right now, take up a couple of questions and comments. So please feel free if uh, you have any on the basis of what we have discussed so far. Okay, uh, Saubhagya is saying, uh, hi ma'am, I have one question. When some pastors pray, demons will leave easily um, from people, but when some believers pray, it takes time for the demons to go out from that person. Why is it like that? Okay, so it could be, so Saubhagya, if you look at Matthew chapter 17, Okay, in Matthew chapter 17, there is the incident of uh, um, the disciples trying to cast out a demon and they're not able to do it, right? Then later they come back to Jesus and they say, Jesus, why couldn't we do it? And then he says, this kind shall not go out except uh, by prayer and fasting. So basically what Jesus was trying to say is, one must build their faith to cast out demons. What does prayer and fasting do? It builds our faith. So maybe they were lacking in faith and they were not able to cast out the demons the way Jesus did. So even in this situation, maybe, maybe, okay, so I'm not saying exactly that's the reason, but one of the reasons could be that, you know, the pastor was able to do because they are operating in faith and uh, those believers, maybe they're new in casting out demons and uh, their faith is still not yet, uh, you know, strong enough. So that could be the reason, Sabagya. I hope that answers your question. And Shubham says, why so many pastors and believers pray uh, is not so powerful as God wants us to be. Okay, uh, Shubham, I didn't get the 
why are you saying why are prayers not answered there, can, there are many reasons for that shubham it's not that the prayer is not powerful or that the person uh, you know is failing that's not always the reason there are many other reasons maybe the prayer that they are praying it has a certain time for its fulfillment so you know there are many reasons why those prayers don't uh, you know like you don't see them fulfilled so we can't say always that people and pastors are not powerful in their prayers okay fine so let's just go further yeah um rikala says what is the mind most connected to spirit or soul i've heard mind body spirit and uh, soul interchangeably or is the mind when both soul and spirit come into alignment mind when both soul. okay uh, uh, rigala i didn't uh, fully get your question but i can tell you what i understand from scripture so if you go to um first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 that paul he talks about um you know the the spirit soul and body he says let every part of you so while referring to every part of uh, the believer he mentions spirit soul and body okay so uh, there are three parts that all of us are made up of we are spirit we have a soul and we also live in a body body is a physical body which we all understand soul the soul part is what uh, is is called as uh, i think in the greek it's called suke or uh, that's the the part that gives us our personality so that's where our mind is uh, rigala if that's what you're asking a mind where we make decisions in our soul we have our emotions uh, in our soul and um, what else is there we feel we think and we make decisions so that's the personality part of us in our soul and then of course there's the core part of us which would be the spirit man now the spirit man also has um you know like what can you say anyway we won't get into the teaching i hope you got the point okay and i hope it addresses your question so the mind that we are referring to is generally in the soul part of us all right okay ani says do at times when we pray in faith prayers don't get answered what may be the reason so ani uh as we've been saying it can be a prayer of faith but maybe it's not the right timing maybe it's not the right timing for you to get that answer okay secondly uh we are praying in faith but there could be a demonic interference we already saw that in the case of daniel so these are some factors that can cause a delay so what should we do keep praying that's the answer like how elijah prayed first time he prayed no answer second time no answer did he stop no till you see the answer keep praying because we are sure that it is the will of god it is the word of god so don't give up just keep praying that's how we are going to deal with it i hope that addresses your question Mm. Okay, great. Thank you. Any other? Yes, yes, please. Yes. Yeah, we quickly pass the mic to you. Otherwise, we can't uh, hear. Thank uh, you. It's like. Uh, yeah. It's like one pastor or believer. He went for evangelism. He giving tracts to a village. Yes. which they are non believers were sitting so one of the non believer as questioning uh, is speaking like uh, uh, in the bible the beginning it's related to just you said na that uh, god created adam uh, and eve uh, so and god said uh, be multiply then uh, this cain and abel uh, came so that non believer is asking the pastor uh, question like how come uh, the coin killed abel then how come this multiplication happened 
since you said uh, uh, god created humans but they are believing like humans are came from monkeys so they are like hindus background okay. so they are questioning like this so really god created first uh, adam and eve or in the side way god created other humans also like man and woman yeah. so that uh, girls will be there boys will be there so that kain also find a girl and the multiplication may be happened mm -hmm. so what is the proof for that yeah sure sure yeah i hope i can give you an answer and just Okay, so the answer uh, would be: See, God created Adam and Eve. We don't see that. We don't have scripture and verse to say that you know there was another couple created uh, at that moment. Uh, Adam and Eve had uh, Cain and Abel as uh, sons, and uh, Cain killed Abel, and then there's a third son, uh, Seth. His name is Seth. But in Genesis chapter five and verse four. The Bible also says the days of Adam after he fathered Seth were eight hundred years. So eight hundred years Adam lived, and he had other sons and daughters. He had other sons and daughters. Uh, so because we don't see scripture that says you know other couple was created, my understanding is uh, that you know they had more sons and daughters, and they probably those days they just married, intermarried. and that's how um, the generations came to be yeah so the non believers questioning like they are mocking the christianity like so you are saying that that uh, next generation came from sisters which yeah. may be yeah so the the descendants of adam and eve uh, were the ones who propagated the generations ahead yeah sure because i mean uh, if if there is scripture to show that there were other people whom god created then we can justify right but we don't so yeah correct i understand yeah. so according to scripture uh, this might be but in one another scenario we can have like uh, uh, you know god blessed adam and eve mm. because first he created adam and eve in his own image adam in his own image mm. might be in uh, he kept them in the eden uh, that garden right mm. so might be the world is so empty might be maybe created other peoples also that was not biblically written ha huh. so, maybe uh, gerald gerald right yeah gerald see gerald uh, your uh, imagination it's it's good like maybe might be i i understand where you're coming from but whenever we state something we need scriptural backing for it so whatever you're saying like if there are at least two scriptures to kind of undergird that then we can say okay could be otherwise what happens is we can say a might be and then another person can say another might be and there can be a lot of might be's now you don't know which is true which is not so uh it it's fine but just see to it that what we are proposing uh has support scripturally so we at the moment i know only one scripture genesis 5:4 where it says he had other sons and daughters and uh, yeah that's probably the only way uh that the earth came to be right so sure. okay thank you we'll wrap up for now um, there is a there are two questions okay the role of holy spirit in prayer we'll talk about it later on uh, regala and uh, annie says how to handle criticism from others when prayers of faith 
to see answers and also does such cases affect our testimony as a child of God? Yeah, that's a tough one, Annie, but um, stay strong and uh, trust God. It's uh, challenging, but God will come through. Uh, success, I know you have a question, but if you could please drop that in the stream page, that will be very helpful for now. We are just going to close off with a word of prayer. Now I want to request one of us here to take the mic and uh, lead in prayer, please. Anyone? Jaren? Yeah, please pray. Yeah, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Uh, Father, we came to you. Father, we have learned about prayer and intercession. Thank you for this session. And uh, uh, we thank you for everyone gathered here and uh, also the online students and uh, on campus and in Austin. Lord, we thank you and we thank you for our teachers and everything. Lord, uh, let your will be done. Uh, thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you and thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll continue with the same subject next Monday. So every Monday is when uh, the class will be held. Uh, and yeah, so I hope you're enjoying the classes and see you all next week with the same subject. Thank you.